Hey, today on the show, we have Heidi Bullyard from Sold by Design. Um, let me tell you more about Heidi. Now, Heidi is an architect by trade, but is also extremely passionate about teaching realtors and real estate professionals how to think like an architect to get to the heart of what home buyers actually want in a dream home. Now, she started supporting realtors when they began to hire her to do walkthroughs with their clients. I actually should have done that. That was That's a really smart idea. But today, she teaches real estate professionals how to ask questions with the same level of detail as an architect and this the same detail that an architect needs to actually build the right home for someone now she received her bachelor's in environmental design and architecture from ball state university and an associate's degree in both construction management and art from delta college and when she's de when designing homes heidi's main goal is to inspire her clients nurture families and create more happiness and joy in their lives now i want everyone to to do this we, we we very rarely have non-realtors on the show, but this is a very special episode. So I'm really going to ask you to do this because I think it will really help your business. Go to soldbydesign.net, soldbydesign.net, and there is a white paper I want you to download. You just have to give your email address and your name, and it's titled Three Things You Need as a Realtor to Make Money Faster, but written from an architect's perspective. This is a perspective you don't normally get. Trust me, it's worth it. And anyway, also visit Heidi on, uh, uh, sorry, on her social media, which is at Heidi Bolliard, and that's B-O-L-Y-A-R-D. We will have links. And by the way, Heidi is H-E-I-D-I. We're going to have links to that in the show notes. So you don't have to write that down. Just go to our show notes. We'll have a link to Sold by Design where you can download the white paper and of course, follow Heidi. Heidi, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. We are, I'm really excited. I never get to talk to architects. I'm always fascinated. Can I tell you the only architect joke I know? It's, it's, I think it's a really good one to everyone who's, who's in architecture. Everyone else won't get the joke, but um, it's actually a civil engineering joke. So I'll tell you, it's, I don't know many jokes, but I always thought this was great. So, um, and I'll explain it because I think it's, I think it's a great introduction to what we're going to talk about today. So, um, it, it's an old joke that some of you might have might know, and architects um, might have heard it. But it has to do with civil engineering, where it's like, what's the difference between a civil engineer and a psychotic? And uh, the answer is one pays better. And the, and the reason why that's funny for everyone going, I don't get it, is because what I love about architects and civil engineers in particular is like a civil engineer will will look at like a river and 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 then the the, the two banks on either side and and visualize uh, a bridge going across and actually can see this bridge that doesn't yet exist. Uh, you know, and much like a psychotic does, the difference is the, the, the architect or the civil engineer can actually build the bridge. Um, but anyway, it's it's probably not a great joke, but I've always loved that joke that one pays better. You guys are able to visualize things that don't exist. I've never heard any en or engineer or architect jokes before. <laughs> well, so. I, um, I'm embarrassed to say that's, that's my only one, and I probably lost half the audience on it. So if you're still with us, uh, no, I'm really excited because I do not know anything about architecture. And I know that our audience is always looking for an edge as a real estate professional to be able to go inside a home and actually provide more value. So I'm excited to chat with you. But before we get to all of that, I would love to hear about your journey. How did you get started? Did you grow up? I, I imagine a lot of kids grow up probably wanting to be architects. I feel like it's one of those professions that could be a childhood dream. I don't know if that was your childhood dream. So I'd love to hear about how you got interested in architecture and then how you made it a career. Originally, my childhood dream was to be a radiologist. Wow, which, wow, so that is so highly specific. specific. Yeah. You wanted to look at x-rays. Well, I don't there. know, look at bones, like you could see those cool pictures and yeah. like you can it. read those, like that's fascinating <laughs> to me. So now I read blueprints instead. So That's true, that's very so similar. Similarity there maybe, yeah. Um, but I grew up in a fairly rural area um, and we didn't have a whole lot of opportunities for electives. So one sure. of the opportunities I did have was residential drafting. Wow. So I had taken that class. I just absolutely fell in love with it. It was so much fun. And then ended up doing it for a second year, um, my senior year of high school. And then from there went into an architecture program. So if, I mean, that's amazing to me that your school even had 
a drafting a program. I mean, I wouldn't have even known what that was when I was in high school. And there certainly was none of that where I grew up. So oh, wow. um, the fact, like, did you have like the, the drafting table that's at the yeah. end? That's well, at didn't the they end. have mechanical in, like drafting where you went to school? I, I don't know, maybe. So um, I feel like a lot <laughs> of the kids like did the mechanical drafting, but I'm like, I'm gonna, that sounds boring. I want to like draw something that, yeah. I love that. Oh, so, so in high school, you sort of caught the bug. You started understanding how plans, you know, are made um, visually. Um, and then where did you go from there? So from there, I had actually um, went to a community college where I was going to do like a two plus two program. Somehow that turned into eight years and four <laughs> degrees. I don't know how these things happen, but they just do. Um, but yeah, I was in a, like a, an architecture associates program. And in that, I was just like, I, I'm basically taking almost all the classes I need for construction management. And I had a good friend whose dad owned a construction company. And he was just like, I hate when architects don't know what they're drawing, they don't know what they're doing. And so he really pushed me to get a better understanding of construction so that I would be a better architect. So that's why I ended up getting an associate's degree in construction management, which was fantastic too, because it gave me skills for managing and like owning a company. So that worked out later in life. Yeah, that makes sense. It's it's a, a nice skill set to sort of complement um, the design side. Is like now I have to do some project management and understanding how that all works and 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 the actual boots on the ground um, labor part of it. Um, I I think that's so interesting. So as as an architect, I think you have a really unique um, skill set that is I think particularly attractive to realtors. When did realtors start coming to you saying, hey, you're really skilled. I want you to come either check out this development I'm working on, or maybe it's a home my client wants to buy or sell. Um, I'd love to know how that those two worlds interacted. Yeah, I have a client that's a real estate agent and we had done some work for her home. Just she hated like, it was a, I think like an 80s, 80s or 90s home. And she was like, this was way before modern farmhouse was popular. <laughs> and she was like, I'm going to turn it into a modern farmhouse. And I'm like, oh, this will be fun. So we, that's what we did. We like changed the exterior of the home, the facade to make it look like a modern farmhouse. And then after that, like she, she had ran into a few different times clients that we're looking at several different homes in the area that they wanted to buy, but they knew all of them needed to be renovated. So they were looking at some older areas um, in the Columbus, Ohio area, some older suburbs. So all of those homes tend to be closed off spaces and just kind of dark, not enough windows. So I walked through the homes with them and just kind of talked through with them like, what possibilities were with the homes or even some of the homes I'm like this is going to take so much I think it's best unless you're really you have your heart set on it like best to look at one of the other after or one of the other options it's really amazing I'm thinking now like you have such a, a almost complete skill set because uh, a realtor is able to have you come in, evaluate a property, and then you don't just know aesthetically or 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 from an engineering perspective what's what's correct, what needs to be changed, um, what can be changed, you know, the possibilities. But you also probably understand cost, right? Because you have this construction background as well, um, this knowledge of understanding time and 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 how how to actually make the plans from the drafting table, you know, come to life. Um, so. I think that is incredibly valuable to realtors. I think that is, is so interesting. I wonder how many realtors who are listening to our show, which is pretty much our entire audience are realtors. I wonder how many of them have ever thought to reach out. You know, of course we know inspectors and appraisers and we, right. we know yeah. people that can do bits and pieces, um, but you have this really sort of well-rounded understanding of, of how homes work. Um, and so and so now you, you teach people this, which I think is so cool. I've yet to see any other architect 
even think about, you know, teaching uh, agents. So can you tell us a little bit about Sold by Design? I oftentimes, by the way, only I'm only getting to this early in the conversation because I oftentimes forget and then we get to the end. And I'm like, oh, by the way, she's got these great courses. But I really want to talk about these because this is the only course I'm aware of that really teaches a realtor how to think like an architect. Yeah, so we have, you know, a few different like things like the the PDF just to get some understanding of what the sold by design framework is, but we have a four part framework um, that's called sold. So it stands for simplifying the process. And then the O is outlining your client's goals and dreams. The L is for laying the layout of the existing home and the D is for details of the existing conditions within the home. So really just that overview um, from the from the initial point where I meet with a, a client that's looking to renovate or add on to their existing home, kind of starting at that point. So the one thing I always start telling when I'm working with real estate agents is tell them like, you need to go in and see your client's existing home. So even though they're not looking to stay there, like you need to know what's working for them in the home and what isn't working and what they love about the home and what, yeah, they would want to improve if they stayed there. Just knowing all of those things about your client. And then also too, like, I think so many of us can be challenged with communicating what we're really thinking. So if you're in their space, they can show you what they're thinking. So it makes it easier for them to express to the real estate agent what they're really looking for in a new home. So this idea of, of you going into it, someone's existing property and saying, tell me what's working in here. What do you like? Um, and I, I, that's a really interesting question itself. Uh, I've not ever heard anyone, and we've done, I don't know, 400 or so episodes. <laughs> I've never heard anybody ask that specific question. I don't, of course, know every question that our, our guests ask their clients. But I think that is such a smart question because it's not just, hey, what's wrong? What's broken? What, what do we need to fix? What can we improve? That That's important, of course, as well. But understanding what's working. And, and even if they're leaving that home and selling it and going to buy another home, I think really helpful information. You know, what do you love about this current home that you're leaving or that you want to change? And, you know, you're staying put and you want to change. So I love that. Um, what do you think? What do you think realtors miss um, that they could pick up? And I know your courses teach this. I don't want to give away all your secrets, but um, would love to know what what realtors oftentimes just aren't thinking about that an architect would would catch. And I understand we can't teach somebody a skill over this this episode, but is right. there some ways that you would encourage agents to start thinking about properties as they go in and and you know uh, are are there and and witnessing? Yeah. You know, yeah. One thing I encourage. Um, agents to do is I know, you know, I know that with the current market, a lot of people have been not doing their home inspections, but when you have a home that's having a home inspection, go and talk with the home inspector about like things that he sees and like issues and or potential issues and things like that, just because it's going to give you a better understanding of existing homes and the client's already paying for them to be there. So you might as well take advantage of that education. That's a really, really good point. It's, it's something that I, I don't know that anyone's ever said that either on our show, this idea of going to the inspection, you know, I think realtors might think, well, it's going to make me look like I'm involved in the process. I'm there. I'm supposed to be there. You know, it's my job to sort of be there to witness it. But from a skill perspective, yeah, the agent can pick up a lot of information just talking to the inspector and saying, hey, what what did you see over there? Did you know you mentioned this in your report or you mentioned that you're writing it down? What did you see? I'd love to know what you saw. But I have an example. I, I bought um, a condo uh, in the last year and I have this wonderful inspector. I know at the beginning I was joking saying I should have hired an architect, but but ours was a new development. There was really no reason to do that. And my inspector was amazing. And just in case he's listening, he was amazing. We I loved him. But one thing he saw that I would have never seen is he saw that one of my doors was warped in our master, uh, or I'm sorry, the primary bedroom uh, closet um, was, uh, the door was warped. I had I still don't see a warped door when I look at it. Um, and I didn't, um, but he was able to see that. And so I was like, hey, Mark, how did you, and I, today I still have a, I would still struggle to see it, but there are little tricks and tips that, that, you know, people who are, 
you know, part of that, that world understand like yourself. Um, when it comes to design, because you do so much designing, um, what do you, th I think many realtors are just, my guess would be they're afraid to have those conversations. Th they might know the basics about, okay, if you, you know, want to renovate your kitchen, or if you want to add on to the home, you know, they have some general knowledge, maybe even specific knowledge, but what would you, th what, what do you say? I, I would suspect that many realtors just don't really understand a lot of what actually, you know, unless they're developers themselves, um, really understanding the process from start to finish. I'm curious on, on where you see some of those disconnects. I think like looking at existing homes, it's, looking at the existing spaces so looking at what spaces are too big what spaces are too small like where could some things be reworked but i think that going back to that first part of like seeing their home like really understanding what your clients are looking for is so important because if you don't understand that you can't actually walk into a home with them and see how it could function for them yeah it makes so sense it's like it's like thing is really understanding the client lots of lots of questions it sounds like and and i think that's re but like lifestyle questions it sounds that that that's part of it too right like where do you spend the most amount of time in this home where do you relax what does relaxation look like um yeah does know, the whole family cook together in the kitchen or is it just right. one person yeah you know and it's funny too because like i cook a lot um and i was just thinking as you said that that every time i've bought a place um and the kitchens are always been fine but for somebody who cooks a lot they really need a different type of kitchen than somebody who's not as inclined to to you know use the stove and the oven and the range and and, and just all of all of these things and i realized like I'm really in my next home, if possible, if I can uh, make this happen, I need to have two ovens. Um, and I know that now I didn't know that before. Um, and, and, and just because I cook so much. And so it's something that that I'm now realizing, but I wish somebody would have said, Hey, do you cook a lot? Because if you cook a lot, what here's what we, we should do, we should give up some of your counter space or your, your cabinet space, and we should put in a second oven for you. And, and here's why you want to do that. But I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known, right. Um, so mm -hmm. I love this idea of, of people coming in and asking me questions. And this is something that any any agent can do is really, and really, you should be doing it anyway, um, finding out exactly. So asking people about about how they interact inside the home. I, yeah, is what well, I'm and I think asking all of those questions, you're asking the client questions they've probably never been asked in their life. So right. they feel more heard than they've ever felt. So especially if they're interviewing multiple agents before they, you know, select one to help them find their new home or even sell their existing home. Like if you're asking them all these questions, they're, yeah, they're gonna be really impressed that like, You've taken the time to really get to know them and learn about them and learn about what they're looking for in their new home. Yeah, there's there's sort of superficial surface level rapport building, yeah. sales 101 stuff. Like you see some they they're they're they have a picture of them holding a you know a, a fish that they caught. You go, oh, you're a fisherman, and you could talk about that. That's one way of building a rapport, and it's maybe more more surface level. And then there's really getting into somebody's desires, their likes, their dislikes, and that is is very complimentary to somebody. It's actually very respectful, I think, to say, yeah. tell tell me like you know, these kind of questions, you're right. I think that's a much better way to build intimacy, to build trust, because you're demonstrating care. You're saying, okay, yes, I see that, you know, you, you fish and that's great. And we can talk about that yeah. too, but right. I want to yeah, know how you talk it, about those things too. If you guys have, yeah. like, there's some common connection just because then they, yeah, people, people work with people they know, like, and trust. Yes. Yeah. So, so you started creating a, a platform. You realized there was this space in the market where there was a big disconnect between your skill set and, of course, you know you have many uh, degrees, and, and most of our audience are probably not going to, you know, enroll back at university, you know, to to develop these particular degrees. But they can leverage some of your your knowledge and wisdom and actually learn some of some of this framework so that they can come in um, and just, quite frankly, be be a like you were saying, if, if you're in competition with a few other realtors for a listing, um, you're going to go in and say, you know, look, the person behind you might have been super charming and, and maybe maybe that's enough to win the business, but you can come in and actually win with skill. And I think it, we're in the day and age where charm is is being 
uh, you know, demoted as far as importance. And I think skill is, is rising to the surface um, a little bit more than it used to um, from a sales perspective. So I am so interested in, in, in learning this. And I know if I was a practicing agent, which uh, which I'm, I'm, unfortunately I'm not, I'm a little too busy to do that, but I, that would be the first thing I would do would be to sign up for this um, because I want to have an advantage and an edge. So when somebody goes through your course, what are the main benefits that they get to walk away with once once they're sort of and i know you have many courses but what is yeah. the overall sort of objective the overall objective is really just it's honestly the same process that i use when i'm working with a client to rent renovate or add on to their home or even build a new custom home so it's really that initial step of outlining their their goals and dreams for what they're looking for and then the the design process of the, you know, laying out the home and and seeing that and then more detailed things like mechanical systems and the kind of some structural systems like I, I teach like where how to locate bearing walls. So as long as you can get to a basement, like it's it's pretty easy to determine that or even standing on a first floor being able to see, you know, oftentimes in, in the homes, it's just you see a straight wall going right through the middle of the house and there's your bearing wall. So. Well, and, and, and that, and again, I want to pause for a second. I apologize, Heidi, for interrupting you, but you no just worries. said something really important because if I, as a realtor, can walk into a home and have a pretty reasonable idea where the load bearing walls are, I now at least know what isn't possible or what yeah. is what opportunities might have opened up from knowing this information um yeah. that is incredibly valuable because you can go into somebody's basement for example or any part of the home and if you have a little bit of that knowledge you can even just whet the appetite of maybe the prospective buyer if you're if it's a, a buy side transaction or list side and say hey i don't know if you've ever thought about this but one thing I've seen work is, you know, we opening up a certain space and I think this wall can, might be able to come down. Have you ever yeah. thought about that? You know, bringing those ideas is, mm -hmm. is really exciting to people, I would imagine. Well, and I think too, like walking into a home, just because like the people that are selling it are using it as a dining room. Like if you know what their goals are, like, oh, well, they're using it as a dining room, but what if you used it for this space that you wanted in your new home? Like just to help the client also think differently, think outside yeah. of the box when they're walking through the home with you. And, and, and how many of us grew up with dining homes that we ate in twice a year, three times yeah. a year, and they, they're beautiful and they were not to be walked in and touched and, and right. all of that. Um, and Don't have to uh, vacuum or dust it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but how many of those rooms could have been repurposed for something yeah. more functional that you know tradition would have you know, not people wouldn't have been able to see another opportunity in that room because they're, they grew up in a house with a dining room as well. And living rooms, even more of a mystery to me. We, we grew up with a dining room and a living room. We were not allowed in either. Uh, I mean, not really allowed. We didn't do anything in either of those rooms and they just sat dormant. They were pretty, um, but they had pretty things in there. But um, I almost think it was a good chunk of our first floor was like, don't go yeah, in and don't, don't touch. use them. Like, that's don't, like the yeah. old, early, early 90s, late 80s, the great room. Like uh -huh. I had a friend that they had a newer home and they had a great room. And um, he's like, the great thing about it is we never have to clean it because we're never allowed in there. <laughs> I was like, okay. See, to <laughs> like, me, I'd... Like a lot of space to never use. I think in today's day where we're working from home, a lot of us are, well, realtors have always been able to really do that, but, but a lot of, you know, non-traditional uh, work yeah. at home jobs are now work at home jobs. And, mm -hmm. and so you now have, there's a premium on, on, on space. And so now it's like, Hey, that living room that we open, you know, holiday presents in once a year and we never go in uh, with the piano that none of nobody uses and practices on. Maybe it's time to rethink that room into a more functional and useful space. I, I'm curious, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't sort of bug you with this question, which I'm sure you get at every cocktail party or every social <laughs> event you go to, because it would be the first thing I would ask an architect. And it's almost maybe an interior design question. So I apologize if it's not totally in your wheelhouse, no, but I no. suspect it is. But just about like trends, like what, what, what trends are you seeing right now that maybe our audience should, you know, really learn more about as far as, you know, renovation or even just home construction or 
with this move to maybe working more from the home, um, obviously home offices are, are, are more yeah, of a thing. We're seeing and, a lot of homes with two offices now, just because both, wow, both of that. them work from home. So, you know, converting dining rooms, adding French doors so that it can be used as a second office. We see that a fair amount. Um, and then the other thing is interesting, like people are putting in these massive pantries to basically be their messy kitchen. So it's like where there used to be like this nice kitchen, but like you just kind of serve food there and then right. the messy one where you prepare the food. So I feel like this keeps just getting like it's been happening for years, but I just feel like it's just continues. Like people are putting countertops in there even like I know for me, we have our blender in our pantry. We have like a, a um, convection oven that toasts and does all this other stuff, which is nice because it eliminates some of your <laughs> appliances, but like just to get like to keep the kitchen counters cleaner, just so that we don't have all of this clutter. I say clutter creates chaos. So I like does. keeping our kitchen counters more cleaned up. So that one. And then one thing that we heard from a contractor recently is the homeowners want to have a Costco door into their pantry. We were like, what is a Costco door? And it's a door from the garage and it's not a full door. It's like a half door and you open okay. it and from the garage, you can like push like all of your, all of this, the non-perishable stuff you got from Costco into your pantry without having to bring it all the way through the home. That is, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. I love that. It's like your, your 21,000 gallons of mayonnaise you can yeah. just push as yep. opposed to, you know, that, that actually is really, really incredibly functional. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I've seen some really interesting things too. I've seen people build, um, recycling, uh, sort of shoots where mm -hmm. they just put, push a, like what used to be, um, although I don't think we see these much anymore used to be those, uh, I used to think it was so cool growing up and, and there'd be these older homes that had just these yeah. little, like, yeah, th those little, like little you doors with hand. Yeah. Well, the quick hand crushers are great too, okay. but like just those little shoots where you could throw your laundry and it would go down oh, two floors, yeah. you know, and, and end up in a basket. Um, yeah. I'm seeing, I, I think people are really into functionality now. And I think this idea Absolutely. of like you were talking about pantries, like I have a massive walk-in pantry now and we, you know, probably because of, uh, Marie Kondo or whoever the, the, uh, you know, organization person is, um, you know, everything is now organized. We have, you know, these, um, you know, you know, these, these tubs that we use that are labeled and all of that. And, and, it, and we really keep as much of our stuff out of the kitchen. But again, the, I guess the point is asking somebody, Hey, are you the kind of, you know, family that likes to have, you know, your, your convection oven, your toaster oven, your whatever, um, out, out and about so you can use it? Or is it okay if you go into the pantry to use it? Is it better to maybe put the microwave in there and put, um, mm -hmm. and, and keeping the, the area, you know, simple and minimal and clean, which is, you know, more, you know, public facing, I guess, to guests. Um, and we, we've done that uh, in, in our home. Um, we've tried to remove all the appliances from the actual, uh, you know, with the exception of the built-in stuff, um, move right. those into, into the pantry. And it's like, oh, that, why didn't we think of that sooner? So that, that's a, those are some great, great tips. What about, um, so the idea of two offices is great, but again, this is all about asking questions, isn't it? Like it's it really about, yeah. that's so, that's so interesting. Um, I, I have to tell people are using like that like one of the offices, a lot of people are putting like a Murphy bed in it just because you have guests, like how many times a year? Like exactly. if it's like just here and there, like put in a Murphy bed and then you could just tuck your, like I've seen people almost build desks into like the closet space of an old yes. bedroom or a bedroom uh -huh. they don't really use. And then they add, they can close the doors when they're not using it and pull the Murphy bed down. And so their stuff's tucked away and somebody can use it as a guest bedroom. I am the biggest fan of Murphy beds. I, um, we were, we were wanting to do this. I've also noticed that second bedrooms for new developments, um, you know, not primary bedrooms, but second, secondary bedrooms, especially in condos have, at least here in Chicago have shrunk. It used to be that the secondary bedroom was, was not quite as big as the, the primary bedroom, but it was, it was bigger than, than it seems to be now. And now there seems to be more of a premium um, on larger living space, smaller bedrooms. And so we looked into getting a Murphy bed for that second bedroom because we, we yeah, we have guests 
three times a year. It's my parents <laughs> that are the ones who come and use it. My sister uh, and her husband once in a while. And 99% of the year, nobody uses it. And I was like, I, I had my first apartment out of college when I lived in St. Louis had a Murphy bed, which was so cool. I thought it was it's, the coolest thing. Fine. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I, I didn't see a Murphy bed until like a year ago. Like it was like about a 20 year gap where you just never heard about them. And now they're, they're all the rage, probably because of home offices. And um, yeah, it is COVID pushed people back. Yep. So it's a place to and, talk and about. That's another, and they're, they're expensive, but they are awesome. And that is, we, we ended up not doing it. And just because uh, the cost of the Murphy beds, one that we wanted was just, was too costly, but, and we, we might still do it because it really, again, having this information yeah. really allows you to go into a home as, as an agent and say, I have an idea for this home. Like, do you guys have a lot of guests? Or would you rather have a space that's more functional? Have you ever thought of a Murphy? Again, bringing ideas to people um, is is great. And so, uh, as far as um, uh, the idea, of, I know pools have also become very very popular, especially since COVID. Very popular um, and outdoor living spaces. Yeah, as well. Just yeah, place to be outside of the home and still be able to have some. It feels like an extension of the home. It feels like additional square footage. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a huge huge fan of 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 outdoor living space, and and yeah. again, there seems to be now more of a, of a focus on on creating a, more of a living functional environment in and outside the home versus right. just a place where we you know end up at the end of the day after work and try to relax and go to bed. Um, this idea that we can actually have fun in, in the home um, is 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 a little bit more of a newer idea, I think, unless, you know, you were dealing, you know, with ultra high net worth people as an agent, of course, they have a lot of space so they can create, they've always been able to create specific rooms for specific things. And, and the average person really usually wasn't able to do that. I think now there's, there's more opportunity because there's just more interest in converting rooms into, into various things. Um, and I think, like you said, with the fun space, I think, you know, with COVID as well, like people couldn't go anywhere. So they were like, okay, let's figure out what we can do in our space so that we have more like, you know, our own personal entertaining space. So. so for an agent that wants to learn more about how to think like an architect, um, obviously soldbydesign.net is a great resource. The, she, uh, Heidi has courses. Um, she is the real deal. She is a, she is not a realtor. She is an architect. She has the drafting table. She goes in and out. And what, what type of uh, projects uh, do you, do you work on mostly? Is it mostly residential? Do you also do commercial? We work on primarily residential work. We'll do a couple um, commercial projects here and there, mostly multifamily, but some other, you know, smaller commercial projects, but those are normally for favors for clients that we have that we did their homes. So, but yeah, so it's nice to mainly focus on residential work. We love doing um, whole house renovation projects, especially in older homes. So taking those early 20th century homes and converting in them into functional living spaces for 21st century families. And, and there is a lot of, a lot of sort of opportunities that again, the average consumer isn't probably aware of unless that they're studying this on their own too. Um, and so I, I think, you know, as an agent, you have a couple of opportunities here. One, of course, you know, soldbydesign.net can teach you how to think like this. And I encourage everybody to consider those courses because boy, just imagine how much more, uh, sort of useful you'll be to your clients when you're able to sort of bring some of that architect knowledge in, yeah. uh, to serving them on a higher level. Yes. Yeah. The at 1000%. And, and also I think if you're not able to do that, you know, buddy up with an architect, somebody who's wanting to do more renovation work or development and, and, you know, ask to take them to lunch or ask to have them come to a property, maybe pay yeah. them for their time is, is another yeah. option. Um, and, and have them come in and say, what, what do I not know that, you know, um, <laughs> what about, are you seeing a lot of additions being so? So I'm 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 interested in in sort of renovation uh, stuff right now because last year, of course, as home prices were soaring, 
you know, and, and rates yeah. were so low. We were seeing a lot of that. It's changed a bit, of course, now. Um, but um, what are you seeing on the renovation front? Is that still as popular as it was in the last couple of years? Where we are in Columbus, Ohio, it has not slowed down. Actually, we're even busier than we were last year. So it's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> so and it's what type of renovations are you seeing? Um, a lot of, a lot of still like whole house renovations, just looking to update the home because they don't want to move. They know, like they really like the neighborhood they're in. They like the schools their kids go to. They're not looking to, they don't really want to move somewhere else. So they're willing to just to renovate their, their existing home. We see a lot of people adding on more space, some more living space, like a bigger family room space, just so that they have you know, somewhere to go within the house that gives them a little bit more room to do activities. Um, but then too, we also see a lot of people adding on um, in-law suites. Oh. So a lot of people have done that to bring um, family back into the home. So having multi-generational households. So yeah, I love that the too. last couple of years when people couldn't see their family, they're like, we want them with us. Yeah. You know, nearby. Go through that. that. that so. That's such a smart idea too, because it also frees up a space in the main home too, right? Like there's, yeah. it's, it's again, it's one of those things that most people don't aren't in, they, they're just not oriented homeowners to even think that way. I know I'm not, I don't think that way at all. When, when I bought properties in my past, I go, Oh, this is what I got, you know? And uh, that's why I've always bought things that looked perfect for the what I wanted at that time, because I don't have yeah. the ability to see what isn't there or to mm -hmm. see opportunities. Um, that's just not a skill set of mine. So um, and I suspect uh, real producing realtors probably are, are more oriented to, to think about things like that. But most homeowners might not be because they're that's not their their area of expertise. So this is where you can come in as an agent and really help define your worth, like being able to not just sell the home and put it on the MLS and market it property and negotiate and all of that, but actually come in and add lifestyle value. Like I'm going to help your lifestyle within this, this property. Um, I think that is, I mean, wow. Yeah. If just giving talk them about some design skills, some basic design skills, just to really look at the space and, you know, help walk their clients through how that home could be their perfect dream home. Yeah, it, it's funny too, because there's a lot of trends that people really, um, you know, in order to stay on top of what's going on. And this is what architects do, whether it's interior uh, trends or exterior trends or design trends, um, you know, or construction trends. Uh, like for example, it's funny, I was, I was chatting with an architect uh, or sorry, an interior designer um, cause our, our place is entirely white, like everything's white. Um, and you know, today that's really cool. In 10 years, it'll be like, what were they thinking? Why, why would they do everything white? That looks so, so silly. But I did ask, I asked an interior designer, I go, am I making a horrible decision? But my countertops are white. My cabinets are white. Everything's the walls are white. Everything's white. And in 10 years, is that going to be, she's like, everything in 10 years is going to be looked at as, as, oh my God, what were they thinking? So the idea is, but understanding that, that there are trends that people uh, are interested in and not, not just design trends, but, but understanding that is really what architects do. That's what they know. Um, and I think this is a huge opportunity to build that in, um, instead of just being like white walls are in right now, understanding more yes yes you know th that's more surface level stuff but understanding functionality i think is really what we're talking right. about is yeah is this like how big's the master bathroom do you guys need a big master bathroom why yeah. do you do you need a separate room for for the you know the toilet for example yeah water closet do you need two yeah. sinks do you need a linen closet like what do you need in the spaces yeah yeah it's it's funny um you know, and, and, and there's, there's things that, you know, architects can look for. And also they can look maybe even most importantly is they can look at existing design and does this existing construction, right. And be able to say, Hmm, you know, there's some problems here, or right. this, there was, there was a construction issue here that you probably wouldn't have ever seen. Um, so, you know, I yeah. imagine those can be incredibly helpful as well. Well, yeah, like learning, like teaching, we teach real, or, yeah, real estate agents, just like things that you can look for within the house, like cracks up in the ceiling, cracks in the top of walls or around windows and doors, like what, you know, kind of figuring out what that is. 
And then also teaching, you know, just kind of assessing age, of, like the age of the furnace and hot water heater and windows. So when I was looking for a house a few years ago, my real estate agent, she had, you know, we were walking through it and she's just like, just so you have in mind, like this was built in 93. She's like, the windows are original, furnace is original, water heater is original, and they're all going to have to be replaced. Because they're, yeah, 30 years old. So, so that having that in mind, that made me think through, well, as an architect, luckily, I was just like putting some numbers together in my head. And I was like, well, once I do that, and we offer over listing, um, I'm not really, yeah, it's not really what I wanted to spend. So, so it was easy for me to make that decision, because she gave me so much information. And then it also saved her the time of having to write an offer on the on the home that we eventually would have not followed through on because then we would have realized later once we had the inspection that all of these other things would need to be done. So it's really just thinking higher level for your clients to save not only them time and money of hiring an inspector, but saving you time as well. I, I mean, can you imagine the, you just said something that was so, so powerful to me. Can you imagine how, well, I, I see both both ways it could have gone, right? So that best case scenario is the inspector sees these issues, brings it to your attention before you, you know, close on the property before you go under contract, of yeah. course, and say, hey, and that, you've, you've already spent hundreds of dollars on, yeah, the inspector. Yeah, and and that's best case scenario. Yeah. Worst case scenario yeah. is inspector misses those things, mm -hmm. and then as yeah. the realtor you know, two years in your clients now are spending 50 grand to replace all the stuff that you as the realtor didn't see, the inspector may have missed, and they're yeah. going to blame you yeah. as the well, agent. Especially because you probably, you know, referred a couple yes. of different inspectors, but that's the one they chose. Unfortunately, the inspector missed it, but they'll still blame you. They so. will still blame you. And, and just to be able to say as a realtor, hey, before we put an offer in, this furnace is 30 years old. Here's what a furnace is going to cost. Let me, yeah. or, or let me do some homework. I'm going to get back to you real quick. I want to find out what it's going to cost to repair it, uh, replace it rather. Um, we need to think about that before we put an offering because I don't want you hating my guts in two years when you have to replace it. Yeah. Um, and, and that in and of itself is so incredibly valuable. And as an architect and as somebody, I know you, you do a lot of other things too, but like just even knowing that is going to make you so valuable yeah. to your clients they're going to go, oh, we were going to buy this property. And a realtor talked us out of it because realtor, they saw all the information that we didn't know realtors knew. And then they're going to refer you to all of their friends when they need real, a real estate agent because they're going to be like, our real estate agent was so knowledgeable. 1000%. Um, I'm sold. I, 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 this is a great place to wrap up because I don't want to beat this point in any further. This is just really cool information that I don't, I'm sure to, you know, there's parts of it that you can find online and other places, but why not just go to one place and learn it from a, a respected professional in the industry? Heidi is awesome. Her company is, is incredibly well-respected and she has wants to teach this to realtors as well. It's just a passion of hers. So go to soldbydesign.net. There's a free white paper about three things that you need to know as a realtor that will help you make money faster, help you start down the path of thinking like an engineer, thinking like an architect. And then there's all sorts of other, she has, she has courses, she has coaching, she you know has all sorts of resources there where you'll start to learn. And if you're looking to invest in your business, you know, you can invest in buying leads or you can, you know, do other marketing efforts, but how often are you investing in your own skill set, right? This is a skill that very, I'd, I would assume less than 1% of realtors really have. I'm just making that number up, but it's probably about right. Maybe one to 5% of realtors yeah. know how to it's think the like an architect. experienced realtors that have been out there for a while. So it gives those yeah. new real estate agents the opportunity to just jumpstart their growth. I love it. And, and really separate yourself from everybody else. So guys, if you're thinking about uh, increasing your skill set this year, and maybe, maybe things are a little slower right now because the market shifted, this is the time to invest in your skills. And imagine being able to say to your client, you know, Hey, I've been trained by architects to look for certain things. So I'm going to ask you some, some questions so we can have, you know, a really, really great experience here together. And Boy, that'll separate you from everybody else. So um, everyone visit soldbydesign.net. 
Um, Heidi and her team run, uh, she, she is busy. She's, she's doing development. She's doing renovation. She's doing home construction. She does it all. And she finds time to teach you guys how to think like her. So let's use <laughs> Heidi's knowledge and reach out and learn like so that you can think like Heidi. So everyone go to soldbydesign.net. Heidi, I want to thank you for being on our show. I was so excited to have you. This is such a unique uh, episode for us. And I hope thank that our you audience- so much for having me. Yeah, and I, I hope our audience uh, appreciated it as much as I do. I know they did. Um, so everyone go to soldbydesign.net. Um, and on behalf of our audience, we thank Heidi. She is a busy architect. She doesn't have time to do these silly podcasts, but she took time because she wants to help realtors. And so we appreciate that. So on behalf of the audience, we say thank you. And on behalf of Heidi and myself, uh, we want to thank the audience for sticking around to the end. Please just, we ask you to do two things for us. Uh, one, tell a friend. Think of one other realtor that could benefit from um, you know, this particular episode with Heidi and send them a link to this episode. You can just have them send them right over to keepingitrealpod.com and also leave us a review. Let us know what you think of the show, whatever podcast app you might be listening to us on, leave us a review, let us know, write us some comments. We want to always continue to improve to better meet your needs. Um, all right, Heidi. Well, it was a pleasure chatting with you. We will see everybody on the next episode. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. Have a great day.